had and the reason that we're even putting together this podcast episode on blue chip nfts is we we had had a twitter space about this a while back uh with david sally yeah yeah yeah. um you know obviously huge huge artists in just the contemporary art scene now kind of dropping his own nfts and he had a great perspective on like what creates blue chip status in the traditional art world and a lot of that is when when you're saying blue chip status it's you've essentially created a consensus around like the art world right you're you've you you know unconsciously a bunch of people have had this consensus and been like yeah that's super valuable art we all believe that it's super valuable art and like consensus is often created by what like what david was saying is it's created by gatekeepers right you know you have your galleries you have your auction houses you have your tastemakers all of these are gatekeepers who uh you know whether they work in unison or just kind of in their own little silos and create this consensus, they've all, you know, the gatekeepers are the ones who, you know, kind of put the art in the door, they get the right eyeballs on it. And then they, you know, over time, this consensus is created that it perpetuates itself where it's like, Oh, this guy was in the loop. Of course, we're going to keep like kind of putting his stuff on auction and we're going to keep doing this and that. And so you kind of have, you know, the, 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 the players in the space are the ones at the ones who, kind of create this uh, blue chip status just by continually perpetuating this cycle. And, you know, when you talk about NFTs, there's not necessarily those, those types of gatekeepers, you know, every marketplace has their featured section and people have their own virtual galleries, but the gatekeepers aren't quite as solidified. Well, do you think they'll come with time? Like, I think that there's a, there's a point to say, you know, this industry in its current state is, is barely a year old. Yep. Oh, I, I definitely think the gatekeepers will come. You know, it just happens naturally, right? You know, where somebody right, right, right. somebody does a really cool like digital art showcase that we've never seen before. And now all yeah. of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, this dude's great at putting together digital art events. We're gonna trust this dude to put together the next one and the next one. And then all of a sudden it's like naturally happens. And you're starting to see the who's who of crypto kind of unfold before before our eyes, right? Like you mentioned Mike Winkleman people earlier and we can go even beyond that and look at uh, Colburn Bell, you, you know, from the Museum of Crypto Art. And like, mm-hmm. you know, there are people that have influence that are, you know, like Zach at Super Rare. Like, you know, when you start to think about who are the gatekeepers, there are people that can literally change your life in this whole game. Like PAC is another is another one. Yeah, so. I, I mean, even even if you if you kind of do the reverse of it, you know, a gatekeeper right now for the NFT market are actually, you know, the whales and the bidders, you know, like. You think so? I do think so. Uh, in a very small, in a very small, hard to recognize sort of way, you know, but um, it's a lot easier for, you know, somebody to come through it who's who's got a thousand ETH and say, hey, I'm going to buy up this whole series of things from somebody. And yeah. now all of a sudden it's like, Oh, oh my gosh, you know, um, Amir or Mondwar just bought a hundred of this person's art, you know, like what's going on here? And I think we saw it, we saw it take place with, um, over the summer, right when we started NFT QT, right. twin, twin Flames, uh, which was this photography project that had existed for a minute, uh, where this guy just photographed a bunch of twins, right? And he had right. a series of 50 of them. I remember looking at it and we saw, um, we basically saw the floor price jump from like five ETH to 20 ETH because some guy bid 20 ETH on one of them, a big, bigger, bigger name guy. And all of a sudden, a month later, the whole floor price has raised like 10 X, you know? And so it kind of, you know, sometimes it, all it takes is one guy to bid on something that all of a sudden it becomes a tastemaker, right? 